evening, Elevate. Can you say good evening to the person next to you? Okay. Ayan. Okay, Orwell. So, are you excited for the last episode of Galawang Forever? Parang kukunti lang kayong excited. Ha? Are you excited for the last episode? Yes? Okay, sabi mo sa katabi mo, I'm excited. Eh, parang hindi. <laughs> okay, so, I have been given the uh, responsibility to conclude the series on uh, love because it is the love month, ano? by defining the relationship. But I also believe to define the relationship, we must first define what is love. Tama ba? What is sex? And how... Bakit kayo tumatawa? <laughs> the, so that we can define the relationship. Tama ba? Yes. Okay. You agree with me. Okay. Let's begin with the world's idea. Okay. Who among you knows this woman? Huh? Okay, she was before your generation. Her name is Barbara Streisand. She's a very well-respected uh, uh, Hollywood uh, icon. And she says, let's read together. I believe in what? Love and lust and sex and romance. I don't want everything to what? To add up to some perfect equation. I want what? Mess and chaos. I want someone to go crazy out of his mind for me. I want to what? Feel the passion and heat and sweat and madness. I want valentines and cupids and all of that crap. I want it all. Does that uh, does that describe the way you feel about love and romance? You know, a lot of people subscribe to that. That is Hollywood's definition of love and romance. And believe it or not, that's what the TV and entertainment peddles. Here's another... <laughs> okay, here's another... Here's another icon of Hollywood, Woody Allen. He's a director. He says what? The difference between sex and love is that what? Sex relieves tension and love what? Causes it. Okay. Wag na kayo mahiya. I'm sure uh, at your age, this is what goes on in your mind, right? Love, sex, love, sex, relationship, love, sex. Right? Okay. So, it's natural. Okay? It's natural. You know who this guy is? Okay. Tom Cruise. Used to be the highest paid actor. He, he gets paid, guess how much? Per film. Huh? You guys know? Who says 10 million? 20 million? 40 million? 50 million dollars per film. Okay. Here's another trivia. How many of you can tell me how many relationships has Tom Cruise already had? Huh? How many? Twelve. Oh, any other bets? Huh? Okay, can you can you tell me some of the names that have been linked to Tom Cruise when it comes to relationship? Huh? Katie Holmes? Who else? Nicole Kidman? Who else? Sina Sina? Who? Who? Huh? Sofia Vergara? Maybe. Okay, any any anyone else? Okay. Ah, oh, you're right. Sofia Vergara. Ah. Oh. But this is just a partial list. Nicole Kidman, Mimi Rogers, Cher, Rebecca De Mornay, Heather Locklear, Melissa Gilbert. Actually, mahaba yung list. I'm not gonna share everyone tonight. 
Because hindi tayo matatapos. Here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. I believe Tom Cruise is a nice guy. And he is looking for a genuine relationship. You agree? And that's why he tries so hard to find it with the right person. Correct? Tama ba? Okay. However, he has not yet discovered what true love is, what sex is for, and therefore, what is the right relationship. And that's why he keeps on trying and trying, trusting the wisdom of the world. And I hope you don't have to go to 12 relationships after listening tonight to find out what does it take to have a really genuine, meaningful relationship. Because that's what we all want. True? Raise your hand if you want that. Ibang hindi ang tataas na kamay. What do you want in life? <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> Raise your hand if you want that. Okay. I promise to share that with you. Do you promise to listen? Okay. Do you promise to learn? Do you promise to apply? Okay. You see, our world today is saturated with sex. And sometimes people equate sex with love. Tama ba? Yes or no? Sex is on the noontime show. Sex is on commercials. Sex is on the billboard. Sex is even now in Yahoo. Ten years ago, you won't, you won't see that. And it's our, our culture is sex-saturated. Can't believe he's saying that inside the church. Yes, I am. <laughs> because people are thinking about it, but not talking about it enough. And that's why making wrong decisions. We need to make an informed decision based on God's definition of sex, which I will share with you later. Here's the thing. Before sex... What's more important? Love. But you see, this is what, the, what, what God says in 1 Corinthians. Basahin natin. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. Ano ba? I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. The world treats sex like a child. What do I mean by that? Immature thinking. Wrong thinking. Hoping he will get a satisfaction that he's looking for. Hindi ba? Yun naman ang hinahanap natin, di ba? We want satisfaction. In a relationship, you want satisfaction, right? You want meaning, right? Okay. But we're approaching it in a wrong way. We're approaching it like children. That's why the Bible says, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. Man. But when I became a man, I gave up childish ways. And this is in the context of the proper view of 1 Corinthians 13 is about love. That's right. Your view of sex will be correct when your view of love is correct. Love must come first. Taka natin? Alright. So, tingnan natin. I'd like to play this video for you to introduce what love is as God defines it. Go ahead.
Let's read together. Love is? Love is? It does not? It does not? It, does, it is not? It does not? It is not? It is not? It keeps? Love does not? But rejoices in the truth. It always, 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 always. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for that great love that you have clearly defined for us that transcends the meaning that the world has put on it coming from you. It's very difficult to understand as human beings, Lord, what true love is. And that's why you gave your son, Jesus Christ, who came down just like us humans who lived a perfect life and died for all our sins to demonstrate how perfectly and completely you love us totally, Lord. And so tonight, humbly we come before you. Teach us from your word how to love. What does it mean and how can we apply it, especially in relationships, Lord? that are meaningful and important and gift given by you alone. Bless our time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. How many of you, honestly, would like to love like that? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay. Good. Ako rin. All of us, right? Okay. Sabi mo sa katin mo, I would love to love like that. Okay, so, para malinaw tayo, I have simplified, okay, what Paul has communicated to us about love versus the love that the world peddles, which is romantic love, okay, versus how God defines love. Romantic love is what? Versus biblical love is what? God's love is what? Commitment. May pagkakaiba ba yun? Okay, because... One is simply based on feelings, right? The other one is based on a choice, an active decision. Correct? Okay. Next one. Okay. Romantic love is what? Hasty. Unsa man sa Bisaya ang hasty? Ha? Huh? Paspas ka ayo? <laughs> what? What? What's the word? I don't know. Dali, dali, hasty, okay? Whereas, God's love is what? Say that with me. Patient. You know what's the other word for patient? Pasiente. Hindi. Long suffering. Say that with me. Long suffering. Ganun ang pagmamahal ni God. And ganun ang pagmamahal na gusto niya magkaroon tayo. Do you want that? Do you want the person that you will marry will be patient? Yes. What about the world? The world's love is what? Self-gratifying. Ang focus ay ang sarili. Self-serving. God's love is what? Self-giving. Sinasacrifice yung sarili. Okay. Romantic love is what? Temporary. Okay, temporary. Whereas, God's love is what? Enduring. Do you want a love that's enduring? Yes. Romantic love is what? Self-motivated. Whereas, God's love is what? God-motivated. Now, let's see. I'd like you to take this time, this one minute, evaluate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10 according to each of those descriptions given there, categories given there. First column, first row muna, and then second row, and then third row, and so forth. Okay, why don't you do that right now? Okay, talk to the person next to you. Tell that person, on the first row, siguro ang score ko would be... Go ahead. Go ahead, talk to your... Oh. Give yourself a score. So, zero pag emotional, very emotional. Pero pag full commitment, 10 yon, 10. Nakuha nyo? Okay. 
Hasty. You're, you tend to be hasty. Zero yon. But when you are what? Patient, ten yon. Nakuha nyo? Okay, go ahead. Okay, time's up. Here's what I'd like you to do now. Bring out your cell phone. Bring out your cell phone. Naka-silent naman, di ba? Okay. I'd like you to turn on the camera of your phone and take a picture of that slide. Go ahead. Okay. Okay na? Okay. Oh, wag nyo nang i-post muna sa Facebook. Mamaya na yan. <laughs> Just take a picture. Here's the assignment. I'd like you to show that slide and ask a friend of yours, a very close friend of yours, who knows you very well, to rate you according to what's there. Okay, that's one person, ha? Isa pa lang yan. Okay. Okay? Okay with you? Okay, number two. Number two. I'd like you to ask your mom or your dad. Show that to your dad or your mom and ask your mom or your dad. Dad, can you give me a rating? You want to find out, right? That is a very honest assessment. Okay? Clear? Okay. So love, sabi ni Harold Sayla, let's read together, is what? Is an unconditional, to an imperfect individual, to meet the needs of that person in a way that requires personal sacrifice. You see, that's how God defines love. And that's the kind of partner that God wants to give to you if you are willing to develop yourself also to be that kind of person. Do you get that? That's the kind of partner God wants to give to you. Sabi mo sa katin mo, pare, para sa'yo. Uh, <laughs> okay? If you're also willing to what? Become that kind of person. You understand? Okay. You see, the world is like a child when it comes to love. Very superficial. And I hope you don't get offended when I show you the next slide because this is how the world looks at women. The guys are smiling. They can relate. It's the truth. Ladies, sorry. That's how the world looks at women. That's right. Very physical, devoid of any what? Commitment, devoid of any patience or kindness. It's all physical lang. You get that? You don't want that kind of love. 
Because that kind of love only leads to this. Okay. Can you tell the person next to you? I'm giving you one minute. Sex is... Complete the sentence. Okay, time's up. Hindi tayo matatapos. <laughs> I'd like to ask, okay, I'd like to ask this gentleman here. One volunteer. One volunteer. Ah. Ah. Isa lang. No problem. Go ahead. Just give a, an, an honest one. Ah. One or two words. One or two words. Go ahead, go ahead. Tignan nyo, pag sex, excited kayo lahat. <laughs> sex is? Ha? Huh? Ano, ano? Sur- surrender? <laughs> What's that? Can, can somebody give this man a mic? Bigay nyo na microphone. Sex is what? Sender. Ha? Huh? Gender. Ah, gender. Okay, okay, okay. Pakilipat dito, pakibigay dito. Dito naman. This group, this group, this group. Yan, okay. Okay, one volunteer lang. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Sex is? Sex is a gift. A gift, wow. Okay, okay, a gift. Very good. Okay, dito, dito. Ah, go ahead, go ahead. Anyone, anyone. Sex is, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Just one word, one word, one word, one word. Ah, sige, go ahead. Sex is uh, done after marriage. Okay. 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 Okay, hey, pass the mic. Last person. Okay. Okay. Six, uh, secret. Secret. Uh, okay. Six, sagrado. Okay. Would you believe me? If we poll the world, all they would say is sex is just physical. That's the justification that the world gives so that you can have as much sex as you want without consequences because it's only what? Physical. Okay. But the truth is, sex is not simply physical. How do I know? Ask the person who has been raped if it's only physical. Ask the person who has been molested if the effect is only physical. It's not. Therefore, don't ever buy the lie of the world that sex is simply physical. It's not. It's more than that. Yun ngang mapagnakawan ka, hindi lang physical yun eh. Kahit physical lang yung nawala sa'yo, right? What's the effect of theft to a person? You get angry. Right? You feel injustice. You want to what? Di ba? Napag nakawang ka lang, hindi ka pa nare-rape. Can you imagine? So sex is not simply what? Physical. It's not. That's wrong. It's wrong. The world's definition about sex is wrong. And that's why people are not getting satisfaction. Because the definition is what? Wrong. Look at this. Do you know that this lady is from Cagayan de Oro? They caught her in Cebu. She is the partner of the sex spread, Australian sex predator, Mr. Scully. I don't know if you're keeping up with the news. Nakakulong si Scully ngayon sa Lumbia. Lumbia uh, Jail. This is the partner. What they do is they will get street kids and they will pay the street kids, bring them to a room, and let them do fill in the blanks. 
in front of a camera and sell that video for $10,000 to a client abroad. That's what they do. And when she got finally caught in Cebu, this is what she said. That she was a victim of abuse and molestation. So please don't tell me that sex is simply physical. It's not. Look at the effect to her and even to the children that they have victimized. Sex is not just physical, folks. So please tell the person next to you, sex is not just physical. Okay. Do you want to know the right definition, the proper perspective for sex? Do you want to know? Huh? Yes? Okay. Let's ask the author of sex. Sino ang author ng sex? Si God. Kailan binanggit ni God ang sex sa Bible? Sige nga, nakalagay na eh. <laughs> okay. First time God mentioned sex in the Bible is in the book of Genesis, chapter 2 pa lang. Binanggit niya na ang sex. Wow. Okay. So, basahin natin an excerpt from Genesis chapter 2. Anong sabi niya? Let's read together. Therefore, a man shall leave his, his mother and cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Paano ko alam na nag-sex sila? We're both naked and we're not ashamed. That's the best way to have sex. Naked. <laughs> okay. My point is not that. This is my point. <laughs> Look at the sequence. First, before having sex, ano ang kailangan mangyari? A man shall what? Say that with me. Leave. One more time. Leave. Okay. Leave his father and his? Ibig sabihin, seserepered na silang mag-asawa. Right? And cleave. Become one with his wife. And then, that's when the marriage is consummated. The two shall become one flesh. I'd like you to notice the sequence. The sequence is first what? Leave. Maging independent sila from their parents and become because the intention of God for you and your future spouse is to become one. Hindi kayo magiging one kung kasama si mama at si papa sa bahay. Many yon, many. <laughs> right? Too many for comfort. So kailangan what? Live and cleave to become one. Yun ang role that is where sex comes in. In the union. Say that with me. Union. Of a man and a woman. Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Steve. Nakuha niyo? Okay. So yun ang role ng sex. Nakuha natin? Okay, that's the proper perspective. Be How do I know it's a proper perspective? Because the author of sex says so. Sino yun? Si God. Okay? So, most people approach marriage this way. Love, sex, and then marriage. Right? That's how the world does it. Pero sabi ni God, ano dapat? Love, marriage, and then sex. Can you say that with me? Love, marriage, sex. One more time. Love, marriage, sex. One more time. Love, marriage, sex. Love, marriage, sex. In that sequence. The sequence is significant. Important. Okay? Kahit wala na kayong matandaan sa gabing ito, kahit ito lang matandaan nyo, You're on your way to a great relationship. Okay, can I now define for you what is sex according to God? Okay. Sex according to God, yes, it is physical, but not only physical. It is also what? Emotional. It is also what? Very spiritual. The two shall become one. It's not just physical. 
That's emotional. There's an emotional bond that happens. Sabi nga ni Paul, why would you unite your body to a prostitute? Don't you know that when you unite yourself with someone, you become one with that person? Spiritual yon. Hindi lang physical. Deeply relational. Ladies, would you consider having sex with somebody you don't have relationship with? Yung you don't... No, hindi ba? Okay. Powerfully what? Personal. Because it affects what? My perception. True or false? It affects my identity. It affects my affection and satisfaction and bonding with another intimately. And that is the truth about sex. I'd like you to take out your phone again and take a picture. Okay. Pag iprinint nyo ito sa inyong t-shirt, I want commission, ha? I have copyright, ha? Huh? Of the definition. <laughs> no, si God ang may copyright ng, ng definition. Okay. Did you get that? So, next time somebody tells you, oh, sex is just physical. Ah, 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 ah. Show them. Basahin mo. Okay. You see, If you and I are not careful about sex, we will end up just like these guys. Do you know who this is? Sino yan? Sinong Bible character yan? Okay. Samson is known for what? His strength, right? He can wrestle a lion, right? Pero, meron ba siyang ibinuga kay Delilah? What was... What was the thing that brought Samson down? Sex. Sex. Right? Okay. Do you know who this guy is? Ah, David. Right? Okay, David is known for what? Slaying Goliath, the most beloved king of the Jews. Right? Okay. Siya ang hero ng Old Testament. That's why even today, when you go to Israel... Their flag, you know their flag, how it looks like? There's a star there. It's called the Star of David. That's a Jewish flag. David. And yet, how did David fall? Bathsheba. Again, sex. With the wrong woman. Right? Lastly, yung anak ni David, the wisest man in the world, Solomon. Yet, when he was old, his heart was turned away by his many concubines and wives. All three are heroes of the Bible. One is strong physically. The other is strong spiritually. The last one is strong in wisdom. Yet, they all fell with one thing. Ano yun? Sex. Very powerful. That's why this is how we can combat sex. Gentlemen, I'd like you to read this out loud. Yung mga tunay na lalaki. Pakibasa to. Basahin mabuti. Flee immorality. But the immoral man sins against his own. You know, you and I, no match for sex. For sexual temptation. Kaya ang sabi ng Bible... Pag nakita mo, nandito, ano dapat mong gawin? Titignan ko lang naman. Iyan ang ginawa ni David, di ba? Titignan niya lang naman. <laughs> ano sabi? Flee! 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 Run away! As far as possible. Okay. Let's continue. Or do you not know that your body is what? The temple of the Holy Spirit who is what? In you, whom you have from God and that you are not your own. If you have come to faith in Christ, He has bought you with His blood. You don't own yourself anymore. He owns you. That's why Paul says, your body is now what? The temple of the Holy Spirit. Will you desecrate the temple where the Holy Spirit is? By committing immorality? Yes or no? Yes or no? I need to hear it. Yes or no? Parang mahina ang no, ha? Yes or no? no. 
No. For you have been bought with a price. Ano ang tamang response? Honor. Say that with me. Honor. Honor God with your body. That's the right way, the right response to sexual immorality. Here's a warning, ladies and gentlemen. Daily, there are about 200. Daily to, in the Philippines. I'm giving you Philippine statistics. 200 HIV positive patients. Most of them are between 30, 20 to 30 years old. Look around you. How old are you guys? Yeah. But we don't talk about it. They contracted it through what? Casual sex. And majority with what? Same-sex partners. This is happening already. Serious. When you and I violate the guidelines of God, there are serious consequences. Maybe not immediate. Maybe not immediate. It takes five years for HIV to incubate. Five years before you manifest the symptoms. Think about it. Okay? It's scary, really. That is why, let's read together. God designed sex for you to become one with one and experience what? Exclusive, basahin natin, exclusive intimacy that is what? That is, hello? Are you guys still here? Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, experience exclusive intimacy that is? Unique. unique. Okay, let's read that together. God designed sex for you to become one with one and experience exclusive intimacy that is unique. And that is how you define the relationship. Okay? To define the relationship, you have to know how God defines love, how God defines sex. Because before you look for the person that you're looking for, the question is, read with me, are you the person who you're looking for is looking for? Are you? Say that with me. Are you the person who you're looking for is looking for? Nakuha nyo na ba? You want one more time? Medyo mabagal ba, recall? <laughs> Did you get that? Okay. In terms of love, in terms of sex, and in terms of relationship. I will end my time with you guys by giving an application. And this is from the Gospel of John. Gentlemen, let's read together. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I love you, that you also love one another. By these, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love for one another. This first application is for the men. Gentlemen, I'd like you to read out loud. Start upholding the value of women as Jesus and his disciples valued women. Are you a follower of Christ? Raise your hand. Gentlemen, are we going to value women? How much are we going to value them? Just as Jesus valued women women. How do we do that? It starts in the mind. It starts with what I see. It starts with what I entertain myself with. Can we read together what we need to do? Safeguard what you see. Listen. Entertain. Pare. Sabi mo sa katabi mo. Pare. Safeguard what you see. Listen. And entertain. Okay? I think I can say this. Stop looking at pornography. Seriously. You know why I know? I have a pamangkin who's studying at Pisay. He's only about 12 or 13. First year, high school. And I was shocked that even there, 
at that young age, they have Wi-Fi, you know? And he told us that the classmates in their dorm, naka-dorm sila, are watching already pornography at 13 years old. Do you know what's the effect of that in the brain? Okay. We are to what? Treat women with, let's read together, gentlemen. Treat women with love, respect, and understanding. Treat women with L-R-U. Love, respect, understanding. Do you want a partner who will respect you, gentlemen? Who will submit to your authority? Then you have to be the man who will love, respect, and understand. You understand? Okay. As I have loved you, sabi ni Christ. How did Christ love His disciples? Completely. Tama? Unselfish. Okay. Ladies, let's read together. Your, ladies, your adornment must not be merely external. Braiding the hair and wearing gold jewelry or putting on dresses. But let it be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit which is precious in the sight of God. Ladies, basahin natin ano application for the ladies. Start upholding your value as women of worth, not conforming to the culture, but transforming it by your godly example. Godly example. How? Basahin natin. Be selective of what you entertain yourself. What do you use to entertain yourself? Facebook? Careful. What you? Ladies. Kayo, tayo, ladies pa rin. What you? Wear. Careful with what you wear, ladies. Because men are very visual and imaginative. Please reserve the private parts for your private partner. Okay? Tama? Okay. Whom you emulate. Sino ang idol natin? Careful. Whom you go out with. Ladies, basahin ulit natin. Be selective of what you entertain yourself, what you wear, whom you emulate, and whom you go out with. Because what God wants for you, ladies, is to become a person of character. A person who displays what? A gentle and quiet spirit. Gentle and quiet spirit. That is a person of character. That's where we need to focus on, not merely physical. Okay? Not merely physical. You understand? Okay. Because if you simply focus on the physical, paano pag hindi na tayo maganda? Would you like to attract a partner na kasama mo lang, na-attract lang siya sa'yo dahil maganda ka? Mababaw na partner yon. You understand? Okay. Let me end by asking you again, are you the person who you're looking for is looking for? What you do today in the area of love and sex will greatly affect you and your future relationship. And that's why when that day comes, I hope that before that day comes, the choices you make will be wise choices according to God's design and purpose and plan. Because His plans are good and pleasing and perfect. Yun ang design ni God para sa atin. As I end, I want to show a video. We can, we can show a video? To show you how that looks like. I don't count it a burden, whatever, to have to care for her. I, I need to do everything. 
from the moment she gets up to the moment she goes to bed, I do absolutely everything. Uh, I clean her teeth, I shower, dress, everything. And um, But it's pri- it's a privilege. I count it a great privilege to, to care for this one that I've loved all of these years and continue to love. This is the year when we'll celebrate our 50th wedding anniversary. Our stories have been a a lovely story. I first saw her when she was eight years old and her brother became my best friend. We grew up together and as we grew up, yeah, she was there. And I knew that she used to stare at me when I was playing footy with my, with her brother and uh, another friend and when we used to ride bikes and she kept staring at me, but I wasn't interested. I was 17, she was 16. I saw her dolled up, dressed up, and she had an A-line dress on, and boom, it was gone. I was, uh, she was the one for me then, absolutely. <laughs> when we first started uh, dating, I used to ride my bike from where I lived to where she was, and that was about five kilometers on a Saturday afternoon, because it was the only chance we had to get together. And uh, it was hair wash day for her, and she used a special cream in her hair for a shampoo. And I can still smell it, because that smell was so particular, so nice. It was just absolutely special. We had a bike. Uh, I used to ride everywhere on my bike, and then Glad had a bike as well. And we put a, a baby chair on the front of her bike, and so we carried our babies around on the bike with her as well. So... Yeah, bike's been part of our lives, and I guess that has something to do with us now. Around about 2004 5, I began to notice um, that there were things going wrong. She was finally diagnosed with uh, the horrible disease of Alzheimer's. Having lived overseas, I knew that with a bike you can do lots of things. So I had a bike made, a bike chair made. We take it to the beach and ride along beside the beach. And as we do that, we see lots of people. A lot of people come talk to us because it's a unique thing. Nobody else has got a bike chair quite like that one. I am determined to care for her every need, every need. You see, God has loved us so unconditionally. And I understand that God has put his love in my heart. And because I realize how much God has loved me, that's how I too can love my lovely wife. She has done so much for me over all of these years. Now she can't, but I can, and I can return her love. And it's a love that, uh, well, to me, means I can do everything for her. She's my princess, I'm her William, and I wouldn't (laughs) have it any other way. Would you have it any other way? No, No, not at all. We love each other. We're changing power? Okay. Okay. How many of you would like to grow old with a love like that? I'd like you to stand right now. I'd like you to bow your head. And I'd like you to come to the Lord. And tell Him, Lord, I want to learn how to love like that. And I know, Lord, that it is not possible on my own. And that's why I need you in my life even more, especially in the area of love. Lord, may you be the one to enter my heart as I surrender 
all the wrong ideas I have about love, about sex, about relationships. Because unless you are in my heart, Lord, unless you are in my life and take control of my life, I would gravitate towards sin. And I will not learn to love like you. Lord, I turn my back from sin starting today. Because I want to love like you. Please forgive me, Lord. And I thank you that as I repent of my sin, that you have died on the cross and paid for the penalty of my sin. So that your love can unite me once more with my Father who loves me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And starting today, I commit to love like you as you take hold of my life and I surrender it to you. In Jesus' name, I pray. And everybody said, Amen. And Amen. Okay, so are we the person that who we're looking for is looking for? Nowadays in our world, I know na dagahan kayog distorted pictures about love, about sex. Pero you know what? We don't have to accept those yes, those definitions. Our God, the author and the creator of such, He was the one who defined it. And He wants us to experience it the way He he designed it to. As we sing this song, I hope that we learn to break free of these perceptions of the world and experience it the way God wants us to experience it. And before we even experience that kind of love between kanang sa atong mga lola and lolo, we, before we can experience that, we have to experience love itself from God. The source of love and the origin of love. You may think that love does not exist, but you know, God loved you. He loved you first, and He loves you most. So as you sing this song, I hope that you just meditate on that love and allow it to flow inside your heart because it's such a wonderful thing. So sing this song from the bottom of your hearts. You inhabit the praises of your people. You did up in the glory of your Son. In the love of the Father we will worship. In the kingdom of God we find our hope.
your love is true. It conquers all our God. Thank you so much for dying on the cross. Save us from our sins, Lord God. Thank you so much for shedding your love on us, Lord, so that one day we will also be with you in heaven, Lord. Lord, we pray that we will not take this love for granted, for it is a very, very important love. It is the only love that can change people, Lord God. So, Lord, we pray that you use that love, Lord, to empower us so that we can also spread the love that you have bestowed, Lord, on us. But we just want to lift you up in everything we do, Lord. We just want to pray for the food and all the breakout um, that's going to happen, Lord. Again, um, thank you for the food. Uh, let this food nourish our body, Lord. And we pray that for for the breakouts, we'll be able to to share what we have learned and also apply and that we'll be able to socialize Lord and share with each other what what are things that we can do Lord and what are our learnings Lord in everything we do we just want to give you back all the glory the honor and the praise in Jesus mighty name we pray and all of God's people say Amen Amen